Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be giving you alien romance recommendations. <laughs> Now, this is a long-awaited video on my channel. If you did not know, I am obsessed with alien romances. They're somewhat of a staple on my channel. <laughs> but the reason why I have not made a recommendation video until now is because I haven't read a lot of different alien romance books. I have read a lot of alien romance books, but they're specifically from one author. <laughs> So I needed to diversify myself when it came to authors and read other authors to be able to make a recommendation video for you. Now don't get me wrong, I love Ruby Dixon. Ruby Dixon is the main alien romance author that I read from and I will read all of her books from. I'm still currently trying to read all of her backlists. So watch out in the future whenever I do read all of her books, I will make it, be making a Ruby Dixon guide, book guide video. I will do that whenever I finish reading all of them. So if you've never read an alien romance book, I honestly don't blame you. I was very hesitant to pick up an alien romance book myself, but I feel like my love for alien romances really stems from my love for the TV show Roswell. I was in love with it. And um, that TV show is about aliens in Roswell, New Mexico. I think that just furthered me wanting to read more books <laughs> like that. Granted, a lot of these probably aren't like that, but I've always had a special place in my heart for alien romance storylines because of that TV show. And so I, of course, ended up deep diving into alien romances. So um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about those today. So the first series that we're going to be talking about today is the Ice Planet Barbarian series by Ruby Dixon. We're gonna get the Ruby Dixon books out of the way because I feel like that's what everybody knows about is Ruby Dixon. And I've read most of her books. I still have a few stragglers here and there, novellas I need to read. I read this book years ago and at that point nobody had read it yet nobody i knew had read it yet i had no idea why because it was so good and this series just kept getting better and better and better and better and i didn't know anybody else who read them and so i just kept recommending them on my youtube channel and finally everybody's now reading them and talking about them and i love it <laughs> so if you didn't know about the series this is an alien romance series where these human women have been abducted by evil green little aliens but their ship that they're on ends up being crash landed on this snowy ice planet they think it's deserted they don't see any inhabitants there until georgie our main character heroine from the first book goes out and looks for civilization or somebody to help them because they're freezing and hungry and overall dying out in this crashed spaceship in basically the planet Hoth from um, Star Wars. <laughs> That's essentially what it looks like. While she's trying to find some hope for them, she ends up across a blue alien man with a tail, with horns. They don't speak the same language. He speaks an alien language, obviously, but they can't help but become very attracted to one another. So basically each book is about a human woman and their Sukui mate. And to be able to survive on this planet, you need to have a symbiote put inside of you um, to help you acclimate to the weather and help fight off diseases and find yourself a mate and a lifelong partner to produce the best offspring with. So each book is about an alien and a woman being mates together. So their symbiote or parasite called a kui inside of their body will hum and indicate to them when their mate is near. These are just so much fun. They're like cotton candy, you eat them up real fast and you have just a grand old time. You don't take it too seriously. Like it's just so much fun. There's also the spinoff series called Ice Home. The first one being Lawrence Barbarian. No, Lauren's Barbarian is probably the worst cover I've possibly ever seen, ever. I can't stand this cover. Normally Ruben Dixon covers, I love them. This one, no, <laughs> not my jam. This was actually the first Ruby Dixon book that I ever read, not knowing that it was a spinoff series to Ice Planet Barbarians. I never knew about Ice Planet Barbarians. So I read Lauren's Barbarian first off of Audible. I think I checked it out on Audible. Now I don't recommend going that route at all. I was very confused at some points because the, it, they are, there was already world building and previous characters like from the other series came up in this one and I didn't know you were supposed to know about them and everything. So. Um, I recommend not starting with this one. I recommend starting with Ice Planet Barbarians. I really recommend reading both of these series in publication order. I think they feel like you get the best experience out of that. So this spinoff series is basically the same thing as Ice Planet Barbarians, except it's just a new group of women that ended up being rescued, I'm pretty sure, or crash landed onto this 
planet. I don't really necessarily remember. I think they crash landed. And again, Sukui males being their mates. So it's just in spin off series of Ice Planet Variants. It's a whole nother thing. They're just at a different camp on the planet. And again, amazing series. I just have so much fun reading these. We also have the Fireblood Dragon series by Ruby Dixon. These ones are dragon shifter alien books. The first book is Fire in Her, Fire in His Blood. I'm pretty sure that's the first book. <laughs> I don't know. Here's the cover of the first one. This series is honestly really unique and I really like it because I've never read a post-apocalyptic romance book before this point and it also deals with aliens and shifters and everything. So basically the first book sets up the world where earth is now barren and it is post-apocalyptic. It is dystopian now and everything is decimated because one day a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying out of it and just decimating the whole world and now like most of the world is just non-existent except for a few camps and stragglers here and there that have ended up surviving. But there are still dragons and constant dragon attacks. Our heroine from the first book, she gets into a little bit of a bind and gets arrested by the camp she is staying in. Instead of like, like keeping her in jail or executing her or anything, they decide to take her outside of the camp far away to where dragons fly. Put her on the top of a building and basically sacrifice her to a dragon in hopes that she can tame it because they've heard rumors about other camps in the country where human women have been able to tame these dragons. And so one of the dragons scents this woman and ends up flying to her and turning into a man and they claim that they're mates. And so each book is about a dragon and their mate and it's really amazing. Okay, we're gonna talk about my last Ruby Dixon recommendation for this video. Uh, we have The Alien Mail Order Bride by Ruby Dixon. So this one is a very short alien romance if you're wanting to read a novella. This is the one to go. I believe it's on Kindle Unlimited. I believe all of Ruby Dixon's books on Kindle Unlimited. So this is a part of the Rizdiverse. I've only read about two books in this series. I need to continue. So this is about our main character, hero, alien, Envor, who is a blue alien man. <laughs> and he is on this farm planet and he is a retired soldier. And he lives on this farm and he's been really wanting some help on the farm because he has, um, I think, a limp or an old injury from when he was at war. He just needs somebody to help him around the farm. And he's like, well, I don't have enough money to hire anybody. So how about I get a wife? I order a wife for myself. <laughs> and he wants a woman from the same alien race as him because the women of his race are very strong and burly. He's just like, oh, I'm just gonna order a wife online and have her be my male order bride and we'll get married and that'll be that. And then she'll help me on the farm. But when he goes to pick up his new bride at the train station. It may or not be actually a human woman named Nicola. And she may or may not have disguised herself as one of the women from his race so that she can find a safe place to be. So it is a sweet, short romance between the two of them. I've read a few novellas by Ruby Dixon and this one is probably my favorite of them when it comes to alien romances. This one was just super short, super sweet, and I really liked it. Okay, next we have another dragon shifter, dragony romance series. We have the Red Planets of Tajas series by Miranda Martin. The first book being Dragon's Baby. Now, this series is not necessarily my favorite thing in the world. I think I read up to book four, and that was earlier this year, I believe I read up to book four. And I don't think I'm gonna be continuing on, but I feel like other people might like this series, so I'm going to recommend it to you. This is basically Ice Planet Barbarians, but instead of them being on an ice planet, they're on a desert planet. Essentially, basically the same thing as Ice Planet Barbarians, but they're on a desert planet, and they're like dragon shifter men not blue aliens. So the first book is about human <laughs> humans crashing on this desert planet and our heroine is I believe a herbologist um, or having to do something with plants and figure out how to farm and farm and grow crops and everything. She ends up crash landing on this desert planet with a bunch of other people. A dragon shifter, I don't think he's a shifter, he's just part dragon, ends up rescuing her and her crew and everything and they end up being mates. And so that's the main premise of all of these books is they're dragon, esque aliens. 
<laughs> with human mates. Very interesting. But I read them after I read Ice Planet Barbarians and they're so similar to them. If you're wanting for some, looking for something very similar, go for it. I really like them and hopefully uh, they spark your interest. We also have a book that I believe I only gave 3.5 stars to, but again, other people might really like it. This one is Claimed by an Alien Warrior by Tiffany Roberts. Now I've read quite a few uh, Tiffany Roberts books. This one I think is my least favorite that I've read by them. This is a husband-wife duo if you didn't know writing these books. So this is about Zoe and and Rendash and Rendash is an alien man and he ends up escaping captivity where he has been tortured and studied on um, by these scientists on earth and he ends up escaping one night and ends up in Zoe's car and forces Zoe to drive him away and basically forces Zoe to help him escape and protect him. And so this book is about the government chasing both of them, <laughs> trying to get Randash back and everything. And he's just trying to get back to his home planet, asks Zoe to help him get there. And they may or may not fall in love through all of this. Overall, this was a pretty okay alien romance book. It's definitely not the worst one I've ever read, um, but I feel like other people might really like it. So I'm recommending it to you. Next, I have Assigned a Mate by Grace Goodwin. This is the first book, a part of the Interstellar Brides program. I believe I've read up to book four possibly. I don't really remember. I read them all on Audible, like through Audible I listened to them. Um, and I don't have my Audible subscription anymore. So um, I just haven't kept up with the series. So this book is about Eva and she is a part of the Witness Protection Program. And um, the government is trying to keep her alive uh, before the trial of, I believe like her stalker or ex-boyfriend or something like that, I don't really remember. And so they send her to the Interstellar Bride Program uh, to keep her safe off world. And there they end up matching you with your best potential mate and end up sending you to another planet where your mate will be. And she doesn't think anything of it. She's like, okay, I'm, once the trial is over, I can come back home and everything. This is just a ploy, a part of the witness protection program to keep me safe. But she ends up getting sent to be an alien king's mate. And the, <laughs> this series is just wild. Like um, each book is about a human woman and a mate or mates, plural. <laughs> uh, they're all super steamy, like super steamy. Um, <laughs> um, probably some of the steamiest alien romance I've ever read. And some of it's a little bit taboo and dark. So if you're into that stuff, this series is definitely for you. It's a romance between the two of them, obviously, and each book is about a human woman and they're Mate. Then we have Toxic Desire by Robin Lovett. I still have to read the rest of the series. I am so excited to. Reading this book, I read this earlier this year and this just gave me the same feelings that I get when I first read Ice Planet and Barbarians and how I fell in love with them. So this is about Nimona and Oten and Nimona is a human woman, a part of this intergalactic fleet. And Oten is the leader of the alien species that are at war with the humans. And they have wiped out plenty of people from each of the species and they are mortal enemies basically. And so Oten ends up commandeering her spaceship, ends up getting in a fight with Nimona battling and they end up accidentally getting into this space pod, like fighting while in the space pod um, on this spaceship and it gets released and it drops and lands on this planet. And this is a planet <laughs> that if you are not constantly doing something, um, you will be in excruciating pain, basically. So uh, you're constantly turned on and you constantly have to be doing something um, or else you will be in horrible pain. And so this is an enemies to lovers alien romance because they cannot stand one another, but they need each other to survive. And they may or may not fall in love through all of this. And um, it's so good. <laughs> I need to read the rest of the series. Um, but overall, book one is just so much fun to read. Then we have Blindfall by Amanda Milo. I have one more Amanda Milo to talk about as well after this one. So this book is about a human woman who is blind. She is unable to see, and so she has her guide dog, Coda, with her. But they end up getting abducted and they're put in this human auction on this planet. And our hero ends up seeing her up for auction and he notices some um, skeevy other aliens like wanting to buy her. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna make this human woman go through that. And so he buys her so that he could possibly return her to her home planet, possibly, um, instead of being bought by these skeevy dudes. But once he purchases her and keeps her safe on his little farm, <laughs> it's so cute. These Amanda Milo books, the two that I've read, are like 
just cute, sweet ones that like have like zero like action stuff in them. They're mainly just sweet little homey like alien romances that I love. So this one is just a sweet, cute alien romance on a farm and they end up like falling in love on this farm and it is so cute. <laughs> so then the other Amanda Milo that I have is the Alien Nanny for Christmas. This one is another just cute, wholesome, short one. And I recently read this during like the Christmas season, but this has nothing to do with Christmas, okay? The Christmas pops up and like literally blast five pages <laughs> so if you're wanting this to be a Christmas book it's not a Christmas book it is an alien romance book and it's just so stinking sweet so our heroine she is divorced and she has two sons one is like 13 and the other one is like around two the book starts out with her being in a bind because her babysitter um, like just quit and she can't find anybody to replace her babysitter and she doesn't have enough money to go take her son to daycare or enough time to go take her son to daycare. And her job is telling you, if you are late one more time to work, we have to fire you. I'm sorry. That's just, you're late too often taking care of your kids. She's like, I don't know what the frick to do. And then she opens up her door and a red alien man is standing right there. He gets along so well with her kids and she ends up hiring him as a nanny for her kids. And they live in the same house and it's so sweet and cute and wholesome and just so much fun. And like, this is just a homey, alien romance that I absolutely had so much fun reading. Next we have another alien romance by Tiffany Roberts. We have Treasure of the Abyss. This romance is highly entertaining. I am just very dumb because there's a bunch of like Kraken information and world building that I didn't necessarily understand, but I feel like other people might. I'm just dumb. So this book takes place on a planet that humans have inhabited because I believe Earth has become overpopulated. And so they go to this new planet and they have set up a place for themselves. Um, but little do they know that this planet is already inhabited by Kraken people. The first book starts out with our heroine and she is on a boat in the middle of the ocean because her life long guy friend is wanting to propose to her. Uh, she doesn't really feel those feelings for him though, but she knows that she has literally no other option. Um, so she's planning on saying yes, but she ends up getting capsized. The boat gets capsized and a Kraken alien saves her and he keeps her in this cave and he keeps her hostage, kind of like hostage. He like kind of like kidnaps her or keeps her there against her will because he's like, I'm not gonna let you leave because you're gonna go tell all the people that Krakens exist and they can't know that we exist. They may or may not end up falling in love through all of that. And um, overall, this was just super duper fun. I just didn't understand some of the alien terminology, but that's just a me thing, so. <laughs> and lastly, I'm going to be talking about His Human Nanny by Michelle Mills. So this one is another alien romance that deals with being a nanny. So our heroine is in this program. She takes care of people or she's in this like program. She's been stuck in this contract where she has to like take care of people and she's only ever really taking care of the elderly, alien elderly. She ends up as her last assignment ends up being a nanny for these two babies. And um, she gets on this planet and she sees the alien that she like employed her, like the father to these kids. And he looks exactly like Satan. <laughs> he has a red skin, horns, a a tail and everything and she is she like faints right in front of him and so he takes her to his house she like gets over her initial shock and like becomes the nanny to his two twin babies and the mother is out of the picture he's trying to get her out of the picture because she manipulated him and everything and our heroine just takes care of these babies and learns how to become a nanny for them and stays in the same home and ends up falling for um her employer and her employer falls in love with her and this is just so sweet and um i really liked this one do not read book two though book two is really bad don't read book two just read book one and pretend book two does not exist um if you don't know why you can go watch my november wrap up i talked about why i didn't like book two so <laughs> book one though was really really fun i really recommend that one so there you have it those are some alien romance recommendations for y'all please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you'd land to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one Bye, y'all.